I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town television show. My guest, Karen Fulgner, artist. So we met recently at the Jennifer Perlmutter Gallery in Carmel. Yes. And you were doing uh, Still Lifes with Zoe, uh, figure drawing. Zoe was in the chair. Uh, you were painting, people were coming in the gallery and the, you were painting and it was this Carmel scene that it looked like a place that I wanted to live. It had the sophistication of, of a place, you know, like a movie you wanted to live in mm -hmm. and the work was gorgeous, the model was gorgeous and Thank the you. work uh, in, in, the, in the gallery was stunning. Thank you so and much. And it was the first time one of the first times I've been out with people. So people were out. Uh, you remember people? Oh, yes. It <laughs> yeah. felt, you know, the one thing that was wonderful about that is that it really did feel like the world was starting to come alive again. I mean, we were all masked. It was very safe. But just having that experience, I mean, I haven't done any live figure drawing for a little bit of time due to the pandemic. But um, so it did, it felt wonderful to actually be live again and to have people around and to answer questions and just chat to people coming in. It was it was a wonderful art scene. And, and everybody was excited and it was just such a, it, it was just this thing going, I was, I was like proud of where I lived. Yes. It, 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 was, it was that kind of moment. So you started g graphically and then you, uh, you went into fine art, but let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning. Why, why is art important? Well, as a child, I've always uh, been drawn to it. I've always painted. Um, but uh, I read a book um, a while ago um, that really spoke to me. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert wrote it. Um, maybe you've heard of it called Big Magic. And she um, said something that resonates with me. And she said that um, you have to be in co-creation with the universe. There's something about... The universe is ever expanding, it's ever changing, the world is ever changing. Even um, our bodies at a cellular level, it, they're changing. I mean, every seven years, you're essentially rebuilt in your, um, you know, cell by cell. And uh, if you're not moving along with that, you're not in that co-creation with the universe. And so I feel like art is an evolution and just to truly be human, that's the thing that differentiates us from, from animals is, is, is the, um, the appreciation of art and the, and the creation, that, the ability of creation that we have. So art is important to me because it, it really makes me whole. And I think that art can manifest in so many different ways for different people. It doesn't have to be painting. It doesn't have to be poetry. It can be, you know, Elizabeth Gilbert as a writer or, or it could be even mathematics. I mean, um, there are different ways to come around to the same thing. And um, there, I mean, even say common core is a different way to think about the same problem. You're, you're looking just for simplicity and complexity and yeah. trying, to, yeah. trying to work it down to find that elegance. Right. That's the, 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 where mathematics and art have coincide. And of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So with artists, what, what artists um, inspired you? I mean, thank you very much to Cezanne and Picasso and, um, you know, changing the world with, you know, uh, abstraction. Um, but really, in more recent times, um, I was so inspired by the Sausalito Six. Um, everyone knows Deben Korn from, Korn, from yeah. that group. But, um, it, you know, the the way that they looked at, they, you know, they, you almost need to revalidate uh, the abstraction of, you know, say 1907 when, you know, Cezanne and Picasso were doing this sort of thing, but then, you know, and then, the, you know, uh, post-World War II uh, era when they all got together and said, okay, we're just going to do this a little differently again. And, and, you know, the abstract expressionism, the, you know, moved into the figurative, um, the surrealism, the, the colors they used, the, the, just the validity they gave it, um, the oh, impasto nature of so much of their work. It's just, I, I see it, I'm drawn to it. It's, it calls me, it's a calling. And so, so much of my work is influenced by that, um, that era. The Demon Corps, it's so funny because he is a San Francisco artist, but I claim him for Ocean Park. So I claim him as a Los Angeles yeah, painter. Right, But yeah. I, I see the, again, his work, um, 
is muscular. And, and, and that's kind of what I, I noticed. We talked earlier about Lee Krasner's doing mm -hmm. figurative art, mm -hmm. and it was uh, the, the Hans Hoffman School that in, in the 50s that where, where they were all going. And they, mm -hmm. they, they were developing that language that you've incorporated and, and, and then made your own. So where, where you started in painting and, and over the years, what's, what's, what's the arc been? You know, I, I have always done some capacity of figurative and always some abstract, um, but really um, it's starting to merge a little bit. Um, I, I definitely will always, um, I do love the nature of abstraction because it is a um, medium of expression. I mean, you can really see the place that I was in with each of my abstract pieces. However, um, you see in my, my figurative pieces, I use a lot of color. I mean, it's not, um, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not looking for realism in my work. I'm looking for the essence of. Essence, and, essence. And, yes. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm um, trying to draw emotion um, as well. So to put you in a moment, I think this is, is why art is so beautiful too, because it can take you somewhere. And um, yeah, so it's it, it's it's moving it's moving together. Because I was watching you, and the hands working alone, but the face. But there's a relationship with the model. But there's also watching you move your face. You're incorporating the model as if becoming. It was it was it was a very interesting dance between model and artist, and hand. Because it was it was not two people; it was like three things going on, and and yeah. isn't that interesting? I can get very very lost in what I'm doing. I yeah. mean, everything falls away when when I get to really put my work. And then what we saw yeah. at, the, at, at the Perlmutter Gallery is you were doing a fourth thing. So you're you you were had the, had the relationship with the artist. You had the relationship with the canvas, mm -hmm. and you and you were. The host. Chatting, yes. <laughs> Chatting to people coming in, yeah, yes. That's kind of... So, <laughs> Which it, it, I'm not as used to, chatting to people while I'm painting. I'm, I am not super good at that, but... Um. You did it. You, you did it. And it's, it's quite okay. a... It, it looked... Um, well, for, fortunately, you had a room with some very sophisticated people in it, so that understood kind of yeah. the, 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 the dance and the trick that was going on. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you made it look easy, oh, thank but it's you. but it's a it's it's a it's a tough trick. <laughs> you, you know, it's not yeah. a tough trick if you come up with a lousy painting. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, 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 you know, but yeah. it's a tough trick to come mm -hmm. up with a good painting yeah. in that in that amount of time in that in the, you know kind of forced into that kind of situation. Yeah. So it was very, you know, everybody was getting it. I think that was the. Yes. You know, I, I think that's what made the day so fun, and I think that's what made it for you because you're you were drawing on that audience and it wasn't just a, you know, it wasn't passive looky lose. It was, it was people who were kind of in the, in the arena with you. And I was getting some wonderful questions too. Some not, not yeah. just a, how long did that take you? <laughs> so let's, let's get to the female form. Where did, so from, from building these structures to, to then the form, where, how did that develop? So there's um, a lot of juxtaposition in my art. So, um, I really do love the juxtaposition of, um, say, muddy and then a nice clean color or um, hard lines and then some soft lines and then imperfection with a little bit of more detailed work. So there, there's a balance in that with all of it. Um, and so I start my pieces um, with almost uh, very uh, architectural lines behind yeah. it and then I bring in um, some of the, there's just something about the female form, right? It is it is very in tune with nature and the rolling part of the female form uh, is the juxtaposition uh, with the underpainting. And because so, because the, beauty in that. The, the underpainting was very rigorous. Yes. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. that's for a word. And then this, this was softened. So there was this interesting 
mix, but <laughs> you didn't come to that overnight. How did that? No, I did not. How, no. How did that, how, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I used to paint um, really as, as realism. I think that uh -huh. that as a child you understand, oh, I can do this. And it's amazing actually almost that the brain can translate something in some size and then you can bring it down and, and make it smaller and put it in a different different situation. Or uh, you can create your own little world on the paper. That's pretty cool. But um, then you start getting into the what ifs uh, and the interpretation. And um, I just really find that getting the essence more than the, the realistic side of things um, is where I find the beauty. Yeah, because per perfection is its own and I have appreciation it, it, for that type of art. Yeah, it's a but... it's it's a it's, art is such a many-headed thing. Yes. And yeah. uh, it, it's it's like you're going for an essence. Mm -hmm. Is uh, yeah, I mean this is what I love about late period Picasso. It's dirty, man. He dripped. He splatted. Uh, he it, he he he. You know that perfection was gone. Yeah. But the pow. Yeah. was pow. And there's some real emotion behind that, that too. That emotion was big. And and that's, uh, does, are you always surprised? Oh, I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. It's so rejuvenating after a session of painting. I really do um, love that. It feeds me. And when you can get that out, that to me is a day well spent. I mean, I have wonderful things in my life. I have children, I have family, and um, I have a lot to do but it doesn't feel quite complete unless I have fed that creative fire a little bit and gotten to the next stage. How is it developed? I have to develop a little bit every day in my art. Let's talk about the seriousness of this because like I say, you're, you're, either, a, uh, a, you're either a painter or you're a hobbyist. Yeah. And you're a, you're a painter and the difference is that dedication. Yeah. Whether, you, you know, and, and it's a, I, I think you, you make that choice. Absolutely. I mean, I have a student mindset. Um, I find contemporary artists of today, and I, um, I go and I talk to them, and I understand their process. Um, I get inspired all the time by so many different um, artists of the past and artists of now and different things in nature, in interior design even, in architecture. There are so many things that can spark something and to have that outlet to be able to put my own spin on it and, and create my own something different is just a wonderful thing. So it is, it's something that I have to do. It's really a calling. It's not a, it's not. It's a calling, yeah. yes. You, you studied business as an undergraduate, but as, yes. as, a, as a graduate student, you went into uh, graphic design. Yes. And then making the move from, and, and that has served you very well for your architecture. What's the mindset from switching from graphic design into fine art? And, and was that a difficult right. thought for you? Well, you know, I think, you know, everyone has their, their journey that they have to go on. And, yeah. I, and I absolutely respect the journey that I have been on and I th am thankful for it. Um, I don't know if I would have... Um, done what I'm doing now um, if I hadn't gone the graphic design route. I mean, you do understand. Where, where, where were you as an undergraduate? Uh, undergraduate, I was at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Uh -huh. And then um, I was in Los Angeles for the graphic design program what, what at UCLA. Program? UCLA? Yeah. That's and, a pretty intense program. Yeah. And then, um, uh, you know, and then I went out in the working world for a little bit and worked in San Francisco in graphic design. I did um, a lot of corporate work. Um, I was also in Palo Alto doing that, and um, there's, it, it's, you know, it's a tool, it's a wonderful tool, computers are a wonderful tool, um, and I was able to use the programs and then go back and edit uh, with, uh, you, have to, you had to fix a lot of the bugs that, that happened um, back in the day that those programs created, so I did a little bit of programming as well. But there are limitations, um, and there's no tactile nature to, um, to graphic design, and so, I mean, I, when I paint, it's, I ruin everything. I mean, head to toe, I've just jumped in my pool sometimes afterwards because I can't even walk in the house. Let's, let's talk about tactile. Because, <laughs> uh, let's just talk about paint. Uh, this is what, I hate working on a computer, and I see mm -hmm. all kinds of cool stuff, and I, and we, I make a lot of video art, and yes. we, we do it, and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's not like 
get in your hands and paint. It, and paint is a magic substance. It is, yeah. And endless possibilities. And, and endless, endless possibility and old, and you're into something old. Yes. You're into the first cave. Yes, and right. Do you, do you feel that? Well, I mean, creativity in some sense, ha I mean, came from primal days, right? I mean, we've evolved since then for a reason, right? And I mean, even down from cave drawings, right? Um, that's, you know, whatever was being used then, I don't really know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do love... Um, I love oil paint. Um, I, I work with acrylics too. The um, actually, it's one thing that's wonderful is that the that's evolved as well. So there is quite a lot of flexibility with acrylic paint now, and, and the quality is actually quite beautiful. But oil paint in in that impasto um, build that I often do in my um, abstract work, I really enjoy that. And there's something about the way that paint runs across a texture and I actually do very much. I work on um, wood panel quite often. The way the paint takes on the wood panel is kind of magical to me. I just love, I love that look and I definitely don't try to fill in all the cracks when I'm painting. Um, I think that there's a part of your brain that wants to do that and you have to resist to make it real. You have to always know what level you want to take things to. Right. You do if you polish too. If you polish here, you got to polish there. Yes. You know. Balance. So the and how do you you know so dealing with a with with roughness is is an interesting thing because you have to know when it's done and and I think that comes with experience. Yeah. I've said what I you know it can look very rough, but you've right. said what you wanted to say. It's a maturity, I think, in the field. It's a confidence that you have to build over time to say, it's okay for me to have it be right here because someone will understand. And uh, that's, a, that's a confidence issue, I think. I think that when, when you start painting and, and you haven't been in the industry very long, you, you want to make everything perfect. It has to be perfect so someone thinks that you're talented. And I think that you have to have confidence in your stopping point. Do you have an audience in your head? An audience in my head. When you're working, do you have? Do you imagine the oh, audience watching you? Um, you know, no. I, I, um, do I have an audience in my head? I think that I really do think I find my best work comes when I paint for myself. Ah. I think when so I do something, head, yes. when I say, actually, I just like this because I would like to have this on my wall in this way. Uh -huh. And that's when well, I feel that, like... I, I think I mean this a, a little differently. Do you have an audience in your head that understands you? Oh. That sees everything that you're doing, that, that sees your... The, 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 you know, which is so much better than the real audience who yeah. sees nothing. Yes, yeah, I, I guess that's true. You have to manifest that yourself, right? Yeah. You yeah. have to manifest that in your head to give you the confidence to go ahead and say, okay, yeah. it's done. It's like, yeah, they really get this. Yes, <laughs> they're, yes. They're, they're gonna and see there's the always license to go back, right? You can always go yeah. back because I have pieces from years ago that I may or may, you know, may have not shown, and then I go back in and say, oh, I'm a different person now. I think I need to go back in and and make this more representative of where I'm at. Well, some pieces get better over time. Some people, pieces fall apart over time. It's so true. And you, and, it, and you can never tell at the time. Yeah. It's, it's so mysterious. Yeah. It's all so mysterious. Yeah. And do you surprise yourself? Oh, gosh. Yes. And it's wonderful when you do, right? When you can surprise yourself. Um, and then, you know, when you do surprise yourself, you have gotten to a different creative level. You've, you've moved on to the next stage, and then you always take that little element of surprise, and it, it's drawn into the next piece and the next piece and so on. Do, do people know how much fun we have painting? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Is there anything more fun? Oh, it's wonderful. It's, it's very rejuvenating. Okay. The Jennifer Perlmutter Gallery. Yes. I with Karen Fogner. She makes beautiful art, beautiful, and we're out.